Okay, we are officially recording. All right, so first, um, I'm Courtney Hanks. I work at University High School. I'm the advisor for Yearbook and News. I am sorry that I was a few minutes late to the meeting today. I literally just walked in the door. We've been so crazy busy at school, um, just working with the hybrid model and just some changes going into this year. So um, busy, busy. Um, we use illustration in both our news publication uh, online and we use it for our yearbook. Um, when we did a magazine, we always had illustration in our magazine. And I am um, a professional artist and illustrator, so that is a part of what I teach my students is um, just how to do those things. So um, I, I think today is more about the process of how you work through creating illustration than it is about actually creating illustration. Because the reality is there's tons of resources and I'm gonna show you the different ways that you can do it. But um, if you wanna learn how to do one of those ways, it's just a short YouTube video away. And I love empowering my students to learn and um, do these kind of things on their own, you know, with the very minor handholding now and then. Um, it's just more so in the beginning of the process and then seeing what they come up with and then coming back to the table. Um, so that is where I am focusing today's lesson. So I hope that that is helpful to everyone here and whoever watches this video later. Um, first, why illustration? I think there's a lot of really obvious reasons why this year illustration is more important than ever. Uh, if you look at magazines at all, if you subscribe to any of them, you have noticed that probably half, if not more than that, of the magazine is now completely dependent on illustration because um, photography has been made much more difficult with COVID and our schools are no different than that. We have so many issues with getting photos of events and um, you know sports and um, even in the hallways and classrooms right now, like I know with us, my kids, they take photos every single day at school. And many of them come to me and they're like, there's just nothing going on. Because so many of us are doing like online coursework and students are independently at their desks. So photography can be very limited because you have to deal with what's going on in the physical world. While illustration can be much more conceptual and editorial illustration, which is really what we do the most of, tells a story that really isn't told easily without, um, you know, using reality, using uh, photos that are very much realistic. And photojournalism really should be realistic. We want that realistic depiction. Uh, but illustration comes from a different place. It's like poetry and that it speaks to a different part of us that is still there. It's just not as literal. So it's storytelling at its core. Um, and I have a lot of fun with my kids doing these projects and getting them to think outside the box uh, because so much of journalism is in the box. So this is just like a really cool way to kind of engage the creativity of your staff and to get them to uh, see things in a new way or to approach a new skill. So we use illustration in our spreads. So I can go ahead and show you guys some different ways in the past that we've done that. So let's do share. And then find a window. And your book snacks. From last year, we really didn't do that many last year. Um, you know, our year got cut short, but on top of that, the staff just wasn't that into it. This year, we have a ton more planned. Um, try to find the COVID spread. I know we did some really cool illustrations on that one. And not be in JPEGs. Well, this is fun. Let's see. This might work better. Here it is. So you can see some different ways that illustration was used in a yearbook spread to um, emphasize points. So illustration serves different purposes for this one. All the photography was submitted photography. We had a lot of headshots. Um, this was done by the the actual like graduating student was actually one of my students throwing her cap into the air. Um, 
so we did that actually in physical life, but inside of her bedroom, she had to do it. So she had to like create a photo studio from home. Um, but these little COVID illustrations, and we had more of them, they just, uh, they kind of bring that little story part to life um, and connect the rest of the story together. So we can see these little COVID bits illustrating the actual virus itself. And then the earth, you know, wearing a mask, sweating, uh, got sanitizer next to it. It's just an additional storytelling element that's appropriate on certain spreads. Obviously, we don't want to fill our whole book up with them because it can be um, kind of rob the story from other places. Um, but we did a lot more illustration, not last year, but a year before. So I'm going to come into that. Uh, image files, maybe? You just press it. There you go. 2018, 2019, JPEGs. We did quite a few. So I should be able to find a couple for you. This is a photo studio. So that's more editorial uh, photo, um, photo illustration. Um, versus illustration on its own. So here's one where you have the Snapchat um, blindfold on her. This was a student who got into a car accident um, while snapping a selfie. So um, that was an appropriate usage of it. It's not like we have photos of that event, so it's a great way for us to compensate for that, but also illustrating the point and getting people thinking. And that's really what editorial illustration does is it gets you thinking about a concept in a new way. So we want to see that inside your illustrations whenever you do photo illustration. Uh, we did this great one here. And what we had for this one, it's a bit of an ambitious project. We actually had these students come in. This was a Dungeons and Dragons kids. And we had them tell us exactly what they imagined their characters to look like. And then we created their characters based off of that, that description. So um, each of them had their own character that they play with when they play Dungeons and Dragons. And this was a way to kind of bring that imaginative part of the storytelling of Dungeons and Dragons into the yearbook. You know, it's easy for us to, um, you know, imagine, if, I mean, we photographed Dungeons and Dragons before. It's a bunch of kids in the library. Like we have like 68 kids in Dungeons and Dragons and they're just sitting around playing at tables. And it really just isn't, um, Interest, there's nothing interesting about it. It doesn't tell the story that's actually happening, which is these kids are on these like, huge imaginative journeys together when they're playing the game. And we had the, girl, the kids come in and actually teach us how to play it before we even started the spread because I wanted my kids to know what goes into it before they told the story. Um, but yeah, so it's a way to kind of bring life and color and interest to these spreads, but it's also a way to get kids to think about something that they maybe didn't think of before, you know, kind of bringing in that imaginative element um so that is one of the big things that i wanted to go over with you guys today um there's a difference though between art and illustration and uh, that's a big thing that my kids work through when they work through starting illustration versus um like the stuff that they do normally you know a lot of my students have like little notebooks they keep where they draw on them or they um, they like to draw and they are like part of the art classes and they create these beautiful art projects, which art doesn't have to do a job. And I think that that's such a huge distinction between any type of design. Um, when we do graphic design, it has a job. Illustration has a job as well. And that job is to communicate a feeling, a sensation, a story that is invisible to the eye um you know those those concepts breaking down concepts into a visual construct um so illustration is doing a job it's not just there to make things pretty that becomes decoration and that's not what our yearbooks or our publications are meant to do they're meant to get people to feel something or think about something and that's what our illustrations need to be doing so <laughs> they do different jobs um when we are looking at a spread or a news story where I think illustration will work best, it's almost, um, it's usually pretty apparent from the start that we know we want an illustration for that spread or that story. And it's usually because it's a more complicated idea. It's more of a concept that we're trying to approach. You know, like when we do Dungeons and Dragons, we don't want to just talk about how kids met in a room and played board games. 
we want to tell the story of how epic this was for them, how emotional it is, how um, it brought this group of kind of misfit kids together with this gaming teacher and they created a community. So illustration kind of becomes this thing for us that is like, okay, but the what if we did something different then? You know, how, how can we connect with our audience? Um, for our news publication last year, we did this story on, oh God, what was it even on though? It was about mental health trainings and the state of Florida and how they implemented those mental health hours and how they were gonna happen in our county. And it was this really deep, well-researched piece that we spent a lot of time on. And we had photos of things, but it really felt like it needed an illustration. So the kids came up with this really cute little illustration that we actually animated. And um, that became our featured image for it. And it was just a, a really kind of interesting and um, eye-catching way to approach it. And it gets people thinking about the topic. And once again, that's another job of, uh, that, of illustration is that it gets people thinking about it um, in a different way or in a new way or just more than they have in the past. So yeah, once we establish that we want this thing, then we decide the pieces. So how big will the illustration be? Is it the story or is it just a piece of the story? Um, a lot of what magazines do is um, single page illustrations, which we don't see as frequently in yearbook design because we have all these different parts and pieces that are going into the story that we really can't probably just do page by page. That's not really a yearbook thing we're supposed to do to begin with. Um, so we can do things like that and I wouldn't say we wouldn't. But for the most part, we try to think in parts and pieces and how can the illustration serve the story or the parts that are already on the page. So like right now my kids, it's another gaming spread because once again, photos of kids at computers or at desks, it's just not interesting, but there's so much cool stuff that happens in gaming. So this year they um, stopped the uh, esports. So Overwatch, I guess, was supposed to have a huge competition and they canceled it, yet we're still having football games. So that's kind of where the coverage is, is like, okay, so you can't, you can play football, but you can't sit in a room and play video games um, or safely even from a distance. So that's the story coverage, but we don't have like a great photo for that. So we are working on an illustration that tells the story and the impact and how it makes these kids feel and what they're going through and how it's affecting them um, you know, as new kids who've never played before and experienced kids who've played a hundred times. So, um, I, the illustration is going to be somewhat large on it, but we also know we have a long story because there's a lot that goes into this piece. So kind of like what you saw before, this is going to be a longer story piece, um, with illustration and there probably will not be any photography on the spread. So I know the girls are planning something right now where they have a overwatch screen and then a gaming chair and it's isolated feeling. And we're going through the whole brainstorming process right now. Um, and we started with that idea and then we kind of worked to now we want some of the characters, which I guess it's kind of comes kind of back to two years ago when we did characters, but we want some of the players characters like on a page trying to crawl out of it and um, get to the story where, the, where we're writing about it. So they can, like, are kind of attacking it. Um, and like I said, like, these are things that we sit down and brainstorm. So one of the first things you want to do is like word clouds, uh, just writing down ideas and discussing them in small groups. Don't just say like, illustrator, you're a good drawer in our class and we love you. Can you please illustrate this thread? Um, <laughs> It seems my husband just found out about Starbucks happy hours. Let me um, put on do not disturb. <laughs> um, so, oh God, where was I even at? Brainstorming, yes. Okay, so on the board discussions, together discussions. I think people think that, and it, they do the same thing with writing, that writing and our, all these things are such solitary jobs. I just couldn't disagree more. I think that you know, there's a lot of benefit for kids sitting down and thinking on their own. There's also a huge benefit to just sitting down in a team after they've done that and just discussing where everybody's at, what were they thinking, you know, what inspiration can we find that we like, and connecting it through. There's just a lot of value in that and taking that time. Um, the illustrator always needs to be the person who gets to have the main final say, but they are usually looking for that feedback and that direction. Um, the second thing we do is what we call a scamp which is a 
layout of whatever we're doing. So if it's going to be for the blog site, I want to see a sketch of the planned illustration and knowing the size and where it's going to be at in the story, where it's going to fall. Um, if we're doing a this for yearbook, I want to see the I want to first I want them to stick the copy into a spread and determine how big it is. And then I want them to lay out the whole spread. So where are, is the illustration going in relation to everything else? Because our illustrations are going to be based off of that. Um, so we do that and then we discuss it again. And if everybody's in agreement, we like the illustration idea. We like the space. Everybody gets the space. We understand where we're at. What's the tone of the piece? Um, all of those different things. Then we begin, we, we kind of hand it off to the illustrator for them to work on for a bit before we see it again. Uh, you don't want to have somebody, like, then this is the problem with just giving it to the illustrator. If you just say illustrator, figure it out, and they come back with something everybody doesn't like or it doesn't work on the spread because of the layout and what content you have, you're really sticking yourself in a situation where somebody just spent hours upon hours creating something and you can't use it. So we really try to avoid that when we can. So we try to make it a process of like giving some autonomy to the illustrator so that way they don't feel like they have to like come to us with every single little line they do. Um, so once they've done that, we, uh, we add it to the spread. So I'm gonna go over with you guys in just a second here about the technology that we use and the different um, systems we have in place. Um, but first, before that, consistency is key. So whatever, if you're talking about yearbook and you choose one of these different styles, I would say you need to stay with it for the entire book. You don't want to switch between digital art and physical art and um, all these different methods throughout the book. All right, you're gonna lack consistency and repetition. It's gonna feel disconnected and unprofessional. So once you've established in any publication, um, and the same goes for like a longer blog post, if you're including more than one illustration, you would not want to have different types of illustration in the same piece. So you have choices to make, and some of it comes down to what you have available, what works for your staff, what they feel comfortable with, what fits the tone of your publication. Um, you know, our theme this year is really handwritten and graphic and uh, uh, very much about that tactile feel, like uh, manipulated papers and things like that. And um, that is something that we're recreating with our illustration. So we wanted to make sure that our illustration style reflects that feeling and look and mood and tone and isn't something that's combating it. It wouldn't make sense for us to do hyper uh, realistic or vector illustration that is really technical because it wouldn't make sense for the piece. It would feel out of place. So that's another part of it that's really important is that there's a consistent voice to it. So you're probably going to spend more time on that first illustration than you would on any of the remaining illustrations um, in any publication or piece. Okay, so the technology. Uh, you pick one, don't, don't try to learn them all in one year. Uh, I've learned them over time because once again, this is what I do. So it's not, um, it's not that I sat down and just like schooled myself on every single piece and learned it all at once. Every summer I usually pick up one new piece of technology or program or software and um, to get us to the place where we're at now. But, if you guys want to go through the list that I sent into the chat, you can see um, the different ways. So the first one is that you can complete your entire illustration on paper and then scan it in either through DSLR photography or through a physical scanner and edit using photo editing software and then implement this file into your document. What I will say is if you don't know the difference between a PNG and a JPEG, JPEG images will not have transparency, so it will have a white background wherever your art it doesn't exist, while a PNG will maintain that transparent background, and you should be able to import your artwork even if you're using like an online design software program. So that's great because you can have those pieces that are really cool and interesting even if you're not using the full Adobe suite for all of your publication work. Um, I've given you guys two different uh, tutorials if you go that route. I will say it's it's not super difficult. Um, you know, I usually use Photoshop to manipulate my artwork once it's finished to bring it in to create a prints or whatever else we're doing with it. Um, and I typically use a scanner, but uh, depending on the piece, it might look better if you use a DSLR photography instead and just do a really good um, artwork photography, which is a, 
whole other style in itself. And I'm not going to get all into that today. I did attach a video though that um, does break it down. So those are the two like more low tech options for creating illustration. Um, we've done a lot of that kind of stuff in the beginning when I first started with illustration in the yearbook and we would scan an artwork, manipulate it, and then, um, you know, use that in spreads, especially for like art spreads. Um, but as far as what we do now, I don't do a lot of the scanning in mostly because it's just, it's relying on that physical product. And then there's not a lot of manipulation you can do afterwards if you decide to change things up. So if you ever have a reason to change any of your artwork, it just takes longer to fix. Um, oh God, now the cat's coming. Cat, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Okay, I'm just probably gonna come back here in a second. Uh, yeah, so those are options for you. You have them. And if you're just starting out and you have somebody on staff who does really beautiful physical illustration, um, like that's tangible, you know, using, you know, paint or colored pencils there, you can still use that stuff. It's not, it needs to fit with your theme, but it's not the worst idea to use it. Um, another option you have is Adobe capture. So this is one that we used a lot and I can show you guys a book that we used it the, uh, like a lot, a lot in. Um, we're using it now again this year uh, more frequently because of the, um, the style of illustration we're doing. So if I come out of here, the book before this one. And they're everywhere. So you can see all of the different ways that um, we, yeah, like this is a great example. So over here on the left-hand side, how you can see the, um, these like little noisemakers, the flag, the megaphone, the horn. So what we would do for these is we would actually draw it out in pen in a notebook that we kept in the classroom. And one student did every single illustration for this whole book for consistency. And we would scan it using the Adobe Capture app into the Adobe. And it goes straight into your Creative Cloud and you can use it inside of InDesign and Photoshop pretty easily. So we created a lot of illustrations this year. It was hundreds of illustrations using that Adobe Capture method. And we're gonna be doing that again this year. Um, they are vector files. So a vector file is um, like a, it's like a series of lines connected to points. And so it can be made as big as you want or as small as you want. You can recolor it um, depending on your needs. Uh, vectors are very versatile. It's what you use when you're using Adobe Illustrator. So um, if you can use, bring these right into Photoshop if you only have Photoshop, but you can bring it right into InDesign if you only have InDesign and that's what you use for just for submission. But Adobe Capture is fantastic. It's part of the Adobe Suite. So if you already get any of the other programs, you will also get Adobe Capture on your devices. And we've used it for years and it is just, it's a really cool software to get your kids into and using. And it does save a ton of time because normally I would have to scan in this illustration into Illustrator and then use the tracing feature there to um, fine tune the vector file of it. So it does save a whole entire step that makes illustration, especially when you're doing it more than just like editorial illustration, but you're also using it as part of like your theme graphics, um, it makes it a lot more feasible. So it's less of a burden for your staff. So I'll come back at our screen share. Uh, yeah, so that's the physical ways that you can create and then bring things in. Um, after, so like that's the, you know, straight physical brought in later. You can also work from a sketch. I typically work from a sketch. Um, so I mostly use Procreate on my tablet when I physically illustrate. It's my favorite way to illustrate. It's not vector, it is, um, it's considered pixel based illustration, but you know, what we're creating isn't massive, you know? Um, for the record, I do not illustrate our yearbook and the kids do the whole thing, but um, I'm just very comfortable now with Procreate. I love the software. It is $10 for the Procreate program for an iPad. So if you have an iPad in your program or at your school, it's a fantastic resource that you can add. That's not super expensive and it's very user friendly. There's millions and millions and millions of tutorials online. It is the number one most downloaded paid app um, in the Apple market. It is it's just fantastic. I, I can't say enough good things about it and I'm an Adobe snob. So 
Procreate is a great starting space. My four-year-old niece knows how to use it, so I promise you that anybody can learn it. Um, but I, I, it depends on my mood and like what I'm working on, but a lot of times I sketch in my notebook first, and then I just take a picture of that on my iPad, and then I bring that photo into Procreate and use layers on top of that to illustrate on top. Um, so that's one of the big ways that I illustrate. Sometimes though, I'll go ahead and just do a quick sketch inside of Procreate, um, bring the opacity of that layer way down, and then create a new layer on top of it to create my, the rest of my illustrations. Insider tip, always create a new layer for every single color. It's way easy to recolor when your colors are in separate layers. So if you do choose to go to the Procreate route, new color, new layer every time. Um, all right, you can also create vector illustrations in Illustrator. So another thing that I will do is I'll, I'll hand draw out some different elements and then I'll bring them into Illustrator as a photo and I'll do exactly what I do in Procreate except I'll be doing using the pen tool in Illustrator. And I know that I, I feel like this class is maybe a little bit misleading because I think that the message that I put out about it was more like about me teaching Illustrator. But I, there's so many great resources about learning Illustrator. What taught me was doing like um, one of those, like they do like projects that you can like download the asset folders for and work through the project with people on YouTube. It's not that hard. Just do a pen tool project. It takes maybe two, three hours to learn how to use the vector and get used to the, the rhythm of using the pen tool. Um, but once, and you can, once again, no advisor needs to learn this stuff. You guys are more than welcome and I give you permission. This is me taking off the crown and saying, here student, you can have it because there is just no reason why it's one person in your room or the advisor has to be the, um, you know, illustrating queen or king. All right, you can, anybody in the staff can learn this stuff and it is highly beneficial. There's so much cool stuff you can do with Vector and illustration. So uh, if you're giving them, you're doing them a service by allowing them to learn it. So yeah, Illustrator, pen tool, if you want to learn that, that is a really cool. Um, it's much more of a clean look than the pixel based illustration is. So for the most part learning, especially when you're first starting an illustrator and using vector, um, because there's, it's, it's an extra step to learn how to add texture. It's an extra step to make it look less computer driven. Um, for the most part, it's going to be more computer looking. It's going to look really clean and minimal. Um, it's beautiful. It just may not be the tone or the mood that you're trying to set with your um, style. So you want to make sure whatever mode you choose matches that mood or that um, whatever approach that you want. You know, how do you want people to approach your work? Do you want them to take it really seriously? Does it need to look like super dramatic and serious? Or is it something that's less serious and more fun and light? And do you need to create that sense of fun and you know, your color and your style? So those are the different ways that we create illustrations. Uh, the very last thing that I sent you guys is that once you enter the world of illustration, it's not that far of a jump to move to creating your own GIFs. So uh, after you create an illustration, you can do things like kind of wiggle certain elements um, or move between different ones kind of, or have things move. So um, one way is to use Photoshop. You can also learn how to do this in After Effects. And honestly, I'm gonna be very, very honest with you guys. I don't know how to do it. I've seen a million classes on it and I'm just like, it's one more thing for me to learn. I don't have to learn it. One of the kids can, you know? Um, but After Effects, I know, can also do some really cool illustration uh, animations. So if you have a digital media website that you use alongside your program or is your program, learning how to do some really cool moving graphics is just amazing. We also do a lot of stuff on uh, Instagram, and that's also an avenue you can kind of put those um, little GIFs, little moving videos, and just little animations. All right. I think... I've given you everything. Do you guys have any questions for me that I can help you with? All right, I wanna take that as a no, because nobody's saying anything. My two people in my class. <laughs> All right, well then that is the end of this presentation. That is an introduction to uh, starting illustration inside of your publication. So goodbye, everyone. If you have any questions for me, you can email me at CourtneyMHanks at gmail.com. Um, you can see some of my illustration work at Courtney Makes Pretty at an Instagram. 
Um, so if you want to kind of see how I use Procreate, that is on there for you as well. But other than that, I hope you have a great night and I hope you learned something about illustration. Um, oh. Hi, um, I'm, um, I was just kind of, um, I know someone else in my program wanted to like see this because but they had something. So I'm just wondering, where are you going to put the recording? The recording. Okay. Um, it goes to FSPA, so it should be on the FSPA website. Um, I believe there's like a tab with all the resources. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll check there. Yeah. And I hope I will tell Britt that he needs to include it in the next message. So the link will go to your advisor, hopefully. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.